Well, Merry Christmas, Kingsway. I'm so excited you guys joined us online this morning. Now, before we get into worship, I want to let you guys know we are continuing our sermon series on Fruits of Christmas. Now, I'm really excited to hear this message of hope brought to you by our pastor, Trevor Cope Willard. Now, in this season of hope, this Christmas time, my hope for you is that your house is filled with peace, joy, and love this season. Now, as we get ready to worship, I want you guys to just open your ears and your hearts to the message that's going to be brought to you with this music. I'm looking really forward to getting to worship with you guys today.
of life You are love You bring light to the darkness You give hope You restore Every heart that is broken Great are you, Lord And it's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise to you
love to be able to worship with you guys. Now as we slow down and come into this time of communion, I want you guys to remember the gift that was given to us this Christmas. The gift of a Savior. Now that Savior died for us. That Savior broke his body and shed blood so that we can be together with him for eternity. Now that gift is worth celebrating. And as we take this communion, just gather together as a family or by yourself, however you're watching this video, and maybe you're not even able to physically have something to eat and drink, but just find this moment to, to find yourself in solitude and just pray and give thanks for the Savior, Jesus Christ, that was given to us. Let's do communion together. Good morning, Kingsway. Thanks so much for tuning in. Excited you are here. Christmas is just a few days away. I know for me, uh, the Christmas season is always a time that my kids get really excited. And I remember lots of memories and things that come around the season with family and good food and the possibility of fresh new starts that come with even a new year. Um, but 2020 has been an interesting year, has it not? I know it has been for me. I know for some of you, it's not been as bad. And for some of you, it has been just absolutely torture, and you're excited to see what a fresh new year could bring. But with all that being said, the series that we've been in, uh, The Fruits of Christmas, uh, we're going to continue that today, and I think it's a really important element of what this series is really all about. I, I know for myself, when I think about the Christmas season specifically, I think of gifts. I think of presents. I think of the things that, that come, and I don't always mean the physical things that I think there's just a, an extra amount of stuff that comes with this season. It's uh, the time spent together with family. Um, it's just the extra amount of uh, sometimes happiness and kindness that can flow out of people. Uh, sometimes it's just expectation. Uh, there's just a little bit of extra, like maybe this year will be extra special. And I know for me, when I start to really think about that, it gets me excited. But there's another part of me, and there's a, there's a part of me that also has a little bit of anxiousness, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of fret and worry that creeps in this time of year. There's, there's a little bit of like, what if things go wrong <laughs> type of thing. And, and maybe even what if this is the last one with some people that I truly love around. And I know as the older I get, I, I know I've said this in this series before, I feel like that is the fullness of Christmas. That's the fullness of what Christmas is all about. It's these moments of, 
of joy and excitement mixed in with this reality of where we live and where we are. And I'm hoping that as we walk through this message today, that the message of Christmas will become fresh, anew in your mind, that you will capture it once again, that you will let your childlike faith grow or spark, that you will let your mind and your heart remember and, and remind yourself of the passion that can be there in this season. And, and let the worries and the realities of 2020 or the pain of this year, don't, don't, don't rush it out of the room. Don't pretend like it doesn't exist. But bring those two, because I think that's the fullness of the message of Christmas. It's not ignoring that. It's not pretending like those things don't happen. But it's also a full gift with incredible consequence. So, that being said, let's jump into our third week of the Fruits of Christmas. I want to start with a definition. And this definition is going to kind of set up the concept and the idea of what we're going to talk about and really the fruit, the word or the fruit that we're going to talk about today. And that idea is this. It's a biblical definition of hope. And hope, really, it starts with this. Hope implies hopelessness. Now, I know for some of you, when you hear that, you're like, what in the world do you mean? It's what I just described, <laughs> right? The good moments and the things that you get excited about in Christmas also come with the moments that, 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 that maybe, maybe will steal that hope. That maybe will, will, will render it impossible. Will, will not let it work. Will not let it do its work. It, it's actually showing that when you have hope, it implies that there could be a state of being where you don't. And in fact, when you are hopeless, it is the very thing that you do not have or that you would want but have not achieved or not found any hope. Now, the Bible itself talks about this in the biblical, 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 the Bible's definition uh, of kind of hope is kind of summed up in these kind of terms and these ideas. It's to trust in, wait for, look for, or desire something or someone. So if we take that concept that we just talked about, that hope implies hopelessness, I want to take this definition, I want to flip it. That also implies that maybe hopeless is no one to trust in. Nothing to wait for. Nothing to look forward to. And no desire to even see or be around anyone. Uh, does that sound like uh, maybe a little bit uh, too close to 2020 to you? <laughs> It sounds a little bit close to 2020 for me at times. And that, that can be a little discouraging, I'm not going to lie, that when I look at what the hope definition of the Bible was versus what the hopelessness definition could be, I'm like, man, I think I lean towards hopeless. It's a crazy thing to be hopeless. I was thinking about a story that happened to me not too long ago I was doing some minor shopping at a local uh, large chain grocery store. I won't mention their name. And I was walking out of the checkout aisle when I saw one of those blue light specials. You know what I'm talking about? The ones that catch your eye, that you've thought about maybe you should get, thought about maybe you should have a paw, man, maybe I should get that or think about it. And it, it happened to me. I didn't make it out of the store with the one thing because that's impossible to go to that store for just one thing and leave with one thing. But I, my eyes caught it and I went for it. And I purchased a very cheap, <laughs> but, but my hope was there, uh, TV. And I, it was uh, not a very big one. It was one for the basement and I was excited to maybe have it up on the wall to be able to use uh, for specific things that I had and need for, uh, some video games, some, some different movies that maybe I wanted to watch. Maybe it was just something my kids could go down there and watch. And I brought it home and I, and I unwrapped it on the dinner table. I remember this moment because my wife looked at me and she's like, you bought a TV? Why, why would you buy a TV? But I had a little money saved up, uh, something for my birthday and some things that I had laid. And I, I knew that I had it and it wasn't going to be anything crazy beyond what I could get. And I unwrapped the thing and it was just a disappointment. I remember... I was like, ah, oh, this isn't quite what I wanted. And it didn't have the attachments that I wanted. And the picture itself didn't look that great. And I remember thinking, I got to take this back. And as I went to take it back, I turned from the table and I, I turned around. And the thing was so cheap and light 
that I tripped a little bit. And you know when you try to catch something and then you just end up batting it in the air? That's how light this TV was. I went to catch it and rather than catching it, I threw it. And I threw it across our kitchen and it cartwheeled on the floor and broke into a hundred pieces. You want to talk about hopeless. I looked at the receipt. I had owned the thing for a total of 24 minutes. And it was shattered on the ground. Hmm. Something I was so excited about and had hope in a few minutes before suddenly became a place of hopelessness. And I don't know what your, your year's been like, but I know for me, Sometimes years can be like that. Excitement at the beginning and then somewhere in the middle, a slight adjustment that ends up turning things into turmoil and breaking things that you once hoped in, once longed for, once desired, now are broken and left on the ground. And, and there is no hope. It's, it's done. It's over. It's broken. And today I want to Try to help us refine, reclaim, refoundation, re, re solidly put our hope in something that we can cling to that will not fade, that will not go away, that is absolutely about the fruits of Christmas. So I'm going to do that in a quick way. I want to do that in just five actual quick little statements from the Christmas story that I think will help capture why I think hope is found in a profound way in the Christmas story, which is the ultimate message of Jesus. So I believe it is in hopelessness or out of hopelessness or in hopelessness that hope can be found. I believe just like that TV that is crushed and broken on the ground, if that's been your year, if that's what you felt like your life has been, maybe it has nothing to do with an election, nothing to do with a pandemic, nothing to do with isolation, maybe it has something to do in your own heart and your own soul and your own decisions that you've made. In that hopelessness, I believe Christmas is all about hope can be found. I believe that's what it is. So in these five things, let me just show you where hope is found in the Christmas story. Mary received it. Mary is one of the first that's introduced in the Christmas story in Luke chapter 1. We see her talking to an angel, and the angel says this to Mary. He says, you will receive and give birth to a son, and you will call, he will be called you will call him Jesus, and he will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of the father of David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So incredibly amazing. She, she will receive this promise that has been given from David through Jacob, through Abraham, through the entire Old Testament. She will receive that hope, and she will conceive it. She will give birth to it. She is invited into this hope story. Not only will Mary receive it, but Joseph, her husband, he will choose to believe it. Now, Joseph's story is a little different. Mary, of course, gets this angel. She becomes pregnant, but we find out she's a virgin. And if you're dating someone and you're engaged to someone and they end up being pregnant and you have not had certain things happen that would make you the father, it can be very, very difficult to find trust and to believe that this could be something different. Man, it feels like a hopeless situation for Joseph. But instead, he chooses to believe that there's something more going on. We see his account in Matthew. Matthew chapter 1 records this and this is Joseph being approached now by an angel, letting him know what's going on, what's really happening. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, there it is again. You will receive the seed of David. He is the son of David. Do not be afraid. Take Mary, uh, take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived, what she has received in her is the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And he responds with what? And this took place, the Lord said, through the prophet, the virgin will come, conceive birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God's with us. When, Jesus, or when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel said. He did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home 
as his wife in a hopeless situation he chose to believe that the hope was real there was something else going on the wise men pursued it in the story of jesus we have this famous thing in the narrative you know in the kind of the christmas narrative story in the nativity scene of these wise men that went from afar and pursued the star which i know some of us recognize that this christmas star and just I think tonight or the next day is going to be in the sky of these aligning of the planets that could have been one of the actual descriptions of what was happening, this bright star. And these men from far away saw the signs and recognized what it is. And in Matthew chapter 2, we see them tell King Herod why they're pursuing the star, why they think this is worth pursuing. And here's what it is. In Bethlehem and Judah, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the last among the rulers of Judah. For what you will do will bear a ruler who will shepherd my people. They knew who they were pursuing. They were pursuing a hope, a king that would last forever, a person that would be the fulfillment of what God had promised. The wise men pursued it. The angels declared it. That's, this is one of my favorite stories I mean, in Luke chapter 2, you have these shepherds that are on a hill, and they're, they're just out there hanging out, doing their job. They spend all night, uh, you know, protecting the sheep, watching over them, making sure they're not hurt. And then in the midst of this, suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with, with, the, with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those whom his favor rest these angels appear and they declare that god is doing something amazing god is allowing something amazing to happen he is on the hope train he is bringing hope and these angels declared it now the shepherds that are there they found it holy smokes did they find it these angels appear, they're out there, and they're on the ground. As these angels are declaring it, these shepherds, they find it. They're told where to go to find this hope. So they're sitting there on the hill, and all of a sudden these angels show up in Luke chapter 2. And it says, but the angels said to them, do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy amongst all people. So John Coward said last week, today in the town of David, there it is, David again, Bethlehem. The Savior has been born to you, and the Messiah is the, is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in the clothes, lying in the manger. So after the angels declared their, their hope, when the angels had left them, they had gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that just, that, which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And they went to Bethlehem. And they found Jesus. Now, I know for me, when I hear these stories, I've heard them so, for so often. I, I've heard that, that Mary has received it. I've heard that Joseph believed it. I, I, I know that the wise men pursued it. I know that the angels have declared it. I even know the shepherds, they went and found it. But so many times, they don't connect that to me. And maybe you haven't connected it to you. When Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 1 these words, I think, it, I think it brings to fullness of what's really going on in this Christmas story. Praise be to God. This is the man that walked with Jesus. This is the man that knew Jesus. This is the man who saw and touched the risen Jesus. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of jesus from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish or spoil or fade this inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by god's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed at the last time this hope will never fade, never spoil, never run out. It is here for now and forever by the power of a risen Jesus. And we are invited into it. We are invited 
into it. Now, I want to remind you of the definition of biblical hope. Remember this definition of biblical hope that we had a little bit earlier? I want to remind you, I'll put you back up here on the screen. To trust in. To trust in or wait for or look for or desire something or someone. To trust in, wait for, look for or desire something or someone. This is that biblical definition of hope. This is that hope that we found. I want to bring you back to the story. So, I didn't tell you how the story ended completely. This TV went tumbling across the floor and i'll tell you my heart dropped everything i had hoped for everything that i'd saved up for everything that was in that moment it it uh, it was gone i i quickly picked up the pieces and kind of tried to plug it in and it it didn't work it, the screen didn't even come on and there was pieces of this thing just broken everywhere and uh, my wife looked at me and she actually left the room because she knew I would just be so disappointed, frustrated, angry, sad. And I didn't know what else to do. I, I, uh, I just felt defeated. I felt, I felt stupid. I felt like I had done something that I would regret for a long time. And just a few minutes in. Then I just had this thought. I, I was like, what, what would it hurt? I mean, I'm not going to be dishonest. I can't be dishonest. I, I'll tell them what happened, but maybe maybe there's something they can do. And I remember I put all the pieces back in the box. I, all the things and the brokenness, even the small pieces of plastic and a couple screws that were on the ground. And, and I put them back in the box and, and I made the slow drive back to the store. And I, I walked into the customer service desk. And I remember... This woman came up and I was trying to be as honest as I could. I knew it was my fault. I knew it was my choice. I, I knew that I had made the mistake and, and that I had purchased it, that I had paid for it. I had the receipt that showed it. And, and I just told her, I said, I dropped this. I, no, I didn't just, I threw this across my kitchen and it's broken and it, it won't work. I, I have the receipt. I... I don't know what to do. Is there anything you can do? And I handed her this broken mess of a TV and I, and I handed her the receipt and I still remember it in my mind where I was like, she is going to tell me, no, there is nothing that I have in that box that is anything but just trash. And, and she looked at me and she said, does it have all the pieces? Is it all of it? And I was like, yes. And she said, we'll take care of it. Let's get you a refund. And I'll tell you, when I was thinking about hope and how quickly hope can flood in, that's the story that came to mind this Christmas season. In a year that maybe feels like we've just trashed the things that we love and we've, we're missing out on the things that we care about or things that we love seem so far away from what we had hoped for, maybe hope is exactly what we need real hope so let me tell you this trust nothing else wait no longer look no further desire nothing more than Jesus he is your hope and in fact if I can drive it home with what we talked about in the Christmas story, let me just drive it home this way. Receive it. Believe it. Declare it. Pursue it. Find it. Our living hope. In this Christmas season, I think there is, there's just a part of me that wants sometimes a little bit more than what I think I, I need. There's a part of me that's a discontent part of me that has these childlike dreams of things that, that could be like a blue light special at the checkout line. But I'll tell you what is the nurturing, centering, 
absolutely foundational hope that each of us, maybe this year more than ever, are realizing is our living hope in a risen Savior, Jesus. And I'm telling you, this is the real Christmas fruits. This is the real fruits of Christmas. This is the story. This is the redeeming thing. This is the thing that the world needs. Not just you and me, but everyone around us. We don't need blue light specials, things that spoil or fade. We need real, living, breathing hope. This Christmas season, we need hope for the hopeless. My prayer is for you and I to bring that hope, to be that hope, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. When people have nothing more than broken pieces and regrets, when people have nothing more than missed opportunities and brokenheartedness, that we would be the hope that is Christ, that we would be an extension of what Jesus is, of who he came to be, our living hope, that we would remember like Mary and Joseph, like the wise men, like the angels and the shepherds, that we would cling to it, we would believe it, that we would absolutely pursue it, declare it, and find it, and remember that we're invited into it. Hope for the hopeless. Take that Christmas message with you. I hope that you have a merry, merry Christmas. And that God is your hope. Jesus is your living hope this season. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we approach this day that we recognize your son's birth and that the gift that that is, and that we read this nativity story, this incredible story of this continued thing through the whole entire Old Testament, through the story of the lineage of the promises to Abraham, and to Isaac, and to Jacob, and through the heart and the kingdom of David, and through Israel itself. Lord, that you would provide such a clear gift in a little town in Bethlehem, in a barn and in a manger, to a young girl and to a carpenter, or that you would give the humble gift of that and the first that would see it is the shepherds because you want those that are so far, so dark and lost, so broken hearted to be the first to see the hope that is your son. Lord, may we be continuations of this gift, this message. May we be displays, living displays of this hope. May we be the bearers of your name, your risen son, Lord, we love you. It's your name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I want to encourage you to check out uh, this link that we will be putting up to our YouTube channel. We have a Christmas Eve Eve experience that we're going to be putting out digitally. That will be an opportunity. Maybe you guys have uh, a family gathering or something over that Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Um, that maybe this would just be a small thing that you could play for them or your family that they could watch and enjoy. And it would be something that would remind you of the hope in the midst of your celebration of what you really cling to and what I really cling to as followers of Christ. Check out that YouTube channel. Subscribe so that you'll be aware of when it's available in there. Uh, we'll have it uploaded that Wednesday, the 23rd. Um, that way you can use it when you need to. Um, thank you so much again for tuning in. You guys have a great and glorious day in the Lord. Remember... You are hope for the hopeless. As we cling to Christ, we cling to a living hope. We'll see you later.